In 2018, I became a legitimate, successful artist. And by that, I mean I put out a solo felt piano album, and one of the singles from that got on a bunch of big Spotify playlists, including the almighty editorial Spotify playlist. I just spit everywhere. I'm waiting on the mail truck. It's still out there. Now, I had only been releasing music at this point for a couple of years, and it seemed like all of the tales that I had heard of how notoriously difficult it was to make it in the music industry had been overblown just a bit. Just maybe, I was as talented as my mother always told me that I was, and it was going to be a lot easier for me than everyone else. Thanks, Mom. Now clearly, since I was already getting placements this early in my career, the build would be exponential and compounding and all of those other internet words that we all like to hear. It would just keep happening. This was just the beginning. And eventually, sometime in 2019, I'd be opening for Olafur Arnold's and we'd be best buds and making sweet Spitfire audio libraries together. Now, unfortunately, there were two glaring holes in my line of thought here. First of all, there are absolutely no guarantees that you will ever land on an editorial playlist on Spotify, and certainly not on a consistent basis. By their very nature and their name, they are chosen by editors at Spotify. So that's not you, and you can't control that, so. In fact, it was almost two long years before I saw another editorial placement after that first one. Now, this is true even if you continue to make the same kind of music, but it's especially more true if you decide to broaden your horizons a bit, push yourself as an artist, and try to grow as a producer and mix engineer into new areas and new styles. I guess it kind of makes sense that people don't really want distorted beats and aggressive synthesizers in their music to wash dishes to playlist. Bottom line, you don't have any control over what gets placed and what doesn't. And any time that I've tried to specifically write to get on a playlist, which I'm ashamed to say I have done a couple of times, I've been left feeling even more empty and less creatively fulfilled than if I was just making what I wanted to make in the first place. And if it doesn't work and I don't even get on the playlist that I was trying to get on, I feel like even more of a failure and a sellout. Maybe that's just more of a me problem. I think your time is better spent if you want to grow a real fan base of people who actually care about your music, taking the time to hone your craft and find your own voice as an artist, and then pursuing that with 100% of your energy and effort. Now, fair warning, this is a slower path than if you were just to write music specifically for Spotify playlist, but I really feel like the rewards are a lot greater, and if you do truly care about the music more than the money, then you're probably gonna be much more happy with the artistic voice that you create. And also people are gonna recognize that authenticity and they might even tell their friends about you, which is the best form of marketing that you could ask for. I don't know too many people, including myself, that listen to a playlist and then actively go seek out an artist that they hear on that playlist because by their very nature, playlists are meant to be passive and listen to in a passive way. All of the tracks on those playlists need to sound very similar to all of the other tracks on that playlist. That's how it works. That's why they're a curated playlist for a certain mood. So maybe the listeners that you're gaining from those playlists aren't really your fans anyway. And that brings me to my second misconception about Spotify playlists and monthly listeners. And that was thinking that landing on big Spotify playlists was going to build me a fan base of people who actually gave a sh**. You see, from a marketing standpoint, Spotify is extremely intelligent in the stat that they put front and center on your Spotify profile. Unfortunately, monthly listeners is the least important stat on Spotify in my personal opinion. Streams tell you how many streams you've gotten, which in turn, tells you how much money you've earned. Followers tells you how many people actually cared enough to click on a little button that will let them know the next time you put out new music. It's also a big determining factor in getting your music in algorithmic playlist, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So while they position it front and center, and it is a big ego boost to see your monthly listeners as opposed to your followers on Spotify, those monthly listeners might actually just be people who happen to put on a playlist that contains some of your music, 
while they went to work for the day so that their dog wouldn't get too anxious. So if you're not focusing on getting Spotify editorial playlists and you're not focused on increasing your monthly listeners on Spotify, what in the world should you be focused on? Things that you can, at least to some degree, control. Get as good as you can at making music that you truly believe in and that truly matters to you. And don't be afraid to stand out from the crowd. The growth is gonna be slower than if you just kept putting out the same felt piano album every year, every six months, every four weeks. It happens. But just maybe, you might get noticed as someone who has a unique voice and is trying to grow as an artist and has some sort of authenticity that comes across to your followers and your fans. And that's gonna be far more valuable to you long-term than any Spotify editorial placement. Now, the monetary rewards of landing on these big editorials are real. And if you find yourself in the position of everything that you put out gets put on these editorial playlists, it can be very rewarding. But I do think you'd be really wise to reinvest the money that you earn from that into more sustainable forms of growth and growing an actual fan base that actually cares about the stuff that you're doing. Maybe you could work on building an email list, which is something that you can directly control and directly market your music to your fans directly. Or you could invest your time into something like YouTube where you can connect with your fans on a more personal level, scale over time, and eventually use to indirectly promote your own music. You could also look into Facebook or Instagram ads, which I actually found to be really effective in building my following on Spotify, but I also found to be really expensive. So. I'm not currently running ads at the moment. The more followers you have means, now having more followers means that you're gonna land in more algorithmic playlists, which once again, you have a bit more control over than the editorials, which are totally out of your control. And over time, those algorithmic playlists turn out to be your largest source of streams on Spotify. And every time you put something new out, you sort of feed that algorithm. And that kind of growth on Spotify, I think, is more valuable than relying on the editors to put you in over people who have major label connections. And let's face it, they see so many releases every single day, your chances are relatively slim. Now, I certainly don't have all the answers and I'm still trying things to figure out what works best for me personally, but I have been playing this game for a little while and hopefully I can help you avoid some of the mistakes that I've made or you could simply watch me as I make more mistakes and crash and burn and laugh and point uh, at my misery. Either way, it's a win-win for you, really. Let me know in the comments of this video if you want to see me do more of this kind of thing, dealing more with the business side of being an independent artist. I'd love to do some more of this type of video sprinkled in with my other more creative oriented stuff. So if you got anything out of this video, I'd appreciate it if you hit like and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. And if you like synthesizers, I also have lots of stuff about synthesizers. If you want to hear how I built my Instagram to over 10,000 followers, you can check out this video right here, and I will tell you if I think that is worth doing. Thanks as always for watching, and I will see you next time. I don't know what that was, but bye.